In the first robot arm tutorial, I showed you how to set up your simulation using hard-coded values to make the arm move over, pick up a ball, and then drop it into a bin. In the second tutorial, I showed you how to hook that simulation up to control the real robot and produce very similar behavior without having to write any code for either your master microcomputer or your embedded micro. However, hard coding the movements that you want is something that's only going to be useful for very simple demonstration like this. In a real system, that approach is just far too simplistic. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to take the robot to the next level and make it something more generally useful. We'll be adding a controller for an XB Commander joystick to our simulation. This is an open source robotics controller available from Trosen Robotics that uses the XB Mesh Radio for communications. This will allow us to use the joystick to control both the simulation and the real hardware. So with this, we'll have complete freedom to move the arm around using our joystick pick stuff up and move it where we want. And again, we'll be doing all of this without having to write any code. Just some simple visual network configuration. Please note that the robotics board we're using to control the robot arm has a slot for an XB module. However, we cannot use that slot at the moment because it's wired to use the hardware serial port of the Arduino board. And we need that fast hardware serial port for communication to our master computer. So instead of using the port on the Arbotics board, we'll use a UART SB board. This is a miniature board that can accept the XB module and plugs into our USB on our master computer. We'll use this to communicate with it over a virtual serial port. In order to use the XB Commander and the UART SB, you'll need to follow the setup guides that are available on Trosen Robotics website. A link to those pages can be found on the webpage for this video. Please run their test to verify that you have the commander set up correctly and communicating before proceeding with the rest of the tutorial. We will be starting with the simulation project file from the second part of the robot control tutorial. If you'd like to start with this tutorial, you can find the robot arm control base simulation in the Animat Lab warehouse. You can download this and begin building on that simulation to be able to follow along with this tutorial. At the end of that tutorial, we were using velocity controls to move the arm over, pick up a ball, and drop it into a bin. For this tutorial, we'll continue using velocity controls except now the controls will be coming from a joystick instead of being hard-coded. This will be done using a new feature that has been added to Animate Lab to make it easy to interface with external controllers like joysticks, keypads, and other similar types of control hardware. Within the SDK, this is referred to as the remote control system. A remote control object contains a number of remote control linkage objects. Each one of these links is associated with the command feature on the input system to drive a neural response. The XB Commander has two joysticks with vertical and horizontal output values and several buttons. Using a linkage, you can drive current into a neuron that is proportional to the horizontal value of one of the joysticks, or when one of the buttons are pressed. You can add as many different types of linkages as you need, and multiple linkages can use the same input data and drive the same neuron. So, for example, you can have one linkage that is driven by the horizontal value of the joystick and only provides current to neuron A when the value is above zero or when it is moving left. You can then have a second linkage that only provides a current to neuron B when the value is below zero, or when it's moving right. Or you can have both linkages provide positive current when it moves left or right. It's entirely up to the user how they want this configured. There are currently two types of linkages available. The first is the pass-through linkage. It will take the input value from your linked item, convert that using a gain function, and then apply it as a current to a selected neuron. This is targeted towards continuous input data streams like the joystick position where you always have analog values between A and B. The second linkage type is for pulse data that only comes in sporadically. An example of this is shown with the XB Commander system. It has functionality to detect when a user starts and stops moving the joystick and produces a pulse. So you could use a pulse linkage to look for that pulse signal. When it finds one, then it will apply a specified current to the linked neuron for a given duration. If multiple pulses come in, it will keep track of up to 100 pulses and apply each of them for the correct duration. Another example of where this type of linkage would be useful is if you have another system like Spike 2 that's analyzing spike trains and then sending out brief data spikes each time it finds a matching waveform. 
You can assign a given waveform to have a unique ID and then use pulse linkages to stimulate corresponding neurons within your simulation. So you can have multiple neurons that are stimulated when the same waveform is detected, but each with a different current magnitude and duration. Or you could have a different waveform detection stimulate unique neurons. Again, it's entirely user configurable how you want to set this up. The XP Commander is currently the only remote control system that's available, but I plan to quickly add others. In particular, I'd like to add standard joystick and keyboard input. You can add the XP Commander by right-clicking on the robot interface and selecting Add Robot IO Control. Then select the XP Commander and add it. It has a few important parameters that must be configured. The first is the COM port. When you plug in your UART SB, it creates a virtual COM port. You will need to set this value to match that port in order for it to receive data from the commander. For my computer, I'll set it to COM5. The second parameter is the baud rate. If you're using the default commander sketch, then you should just leave this to the default 38400. Next is the pulse sim step count. This determines how many simulation time steps a start or stop signal is set. So if this is 5 and you stop hitting a button, then the stop signal for that button will be 1 for 5 simulation time steps. Finally, you need to specify the linkages that will be used. When you select links, it opens a dialog box. This is the linkages editor. The XP commander creates linkages for all of the available buttons and joysticks by default but they're not yet connected to anything within the simulation. Before we configure these linkages, we need to make some minor modifications to our network. Previously, we used the firing rate of tonic neurons to control the velocity of our TC and CF joints. These neurons had a resting firing rate of 0.5. If they went above this, then it produced a positive velocity, and when they went below it, they had a negative velocity. However, for what we want to do, it will be much easier if we instead have separate neurons for positive and negative velocities for each one. So let's delete the TC and CF tonic neurons. And then copy the sticky on neuron and paste it four times. We'll call them LJOY left, LJOY right, LJOY up, and LJOY down. Then draw connections from LJOY left and right to the TC joint, and from LJOY up and down to the CF joint. In each of the new adapters, we'll leave the init IO disabled to zero now because we no longer need it. We don't have any initial activation of these neurons, so we don't have to worry about this. We will still be using a velocity control though, to so turn the delay buffer back on to be in the simulation only mode. And set the sync update interval to be 2 milliseconds again. Then set the C property of the gain for the left, LJOY left and LJOY down adapters to be negative 1.
When these neurons are firing, it will produce a negative velocity in those motors. When the other right and up neurons are firing, it will produce positive velocities. So before we go any further, let's do a simple test on these changes to make sure they're working correctly. Let's add a tonic current stimulus to each of them and then name them according to the neuron that they're stimulating. Set the up and down to have currents of 5 nanoamps. Set the right to run from 0 0.5 to 1.5 seconds. Down from 1.5 to 2. up from 2 to 2.5 and left from 2.5 to 3.5 5. then let's disable all the other stimuli then run the simulation good our motors move as we would expect let's go ahead and export out this data chart and rename it Next, let's go and go to an organism and go ahead and export out a standalone simulation. In order to be able to run this simulation on the actual robot, we'll need to shut down Animate Lab because right now it already has the communications port with the commander already open. So if we tried to run the simulation again in the, the robot, it would not be able to open that channel and would die. Then we'll open up a new command window so that we can run our simulation. and then run that. 